AI is a multi-dimensional concept. And if we ever want to capture the opportunities it will create over the next five years, we need to start understanding it in that way. If you're an engineer, it's tempting to over-index on technical side of AI. It feels safe. It's a space where you can be the expert. But sooner or later, you'll hit a wall you can't code through. Because once you move beyond a hobby project to building something that changes the world or creates real economic value, you have to confront the non-technical dimensions of AI. If you're not an engineer, don't feel as if AI is something beyond you. Some of the greatest challenges that will come will require your experience to solve. Do not believe anybody that tries to reduce AI down to solely a technical issue. Seeing AI as multidimensional does two things. It helps us appreciate the complexity of the problems it brings, and it helps us anticipate the opportunities. That mindset, I think, is the antidote to the constant fear of AI taking our jobs. Let's unpack some of these dimensions. Let's start with the technical. We've already seen how AI has stretched the limits of infrastructure and software. From data centers and energy supply to algorithms themselves, it's been a wave of constant innovation. Many of the biggest technical challenges, latency, memory, cost, have been tackled through smarter designs. But even as those hurdles fall, new ones keep appearing. That's the nature of progress in this space. The bigger story is that the frontier keeps shifting. Efficiency gains in one area unlock new demands in another. Take large-scale infrastructure. Projects like Stargate, announced in 2025, aren't just about building more data centers. They're building full compute ecosystems. We're talking about dedicated energy supply, bespoke cooling systems, global networks on a scale of national infrastructure projects. Here's the paradox. The more efficient and capable this infrastructure becomes, the cheaper and more accessible AI systems get, which then drives even higher demand for compute, power, and cooling. That's Jevons' paradox in action. The more efficient you make a resource, the more it ends up being used. And this efficiency comes at an environmental cost. AI is energy intensive. According to the International Energy Agency, global data center and electricity demand is already in the hundreds of terawatt hours. The US alone produces over 105 million tons of CO2 equivalent each year from data centers. That's around 2% of national emissions. Morgan Stanley projects emissions could reach 2.5 billion tons of CO2 by 2030. But it's not just carbon. Water use is an emerging issue too. Some of the data centers consume up to 5 million gallons of drinking water a day, often in water-stressed regions, and many rely on cooling systems that use chemicals and forever compounds, which risk contaminating local water cycles. So when you run a big model or fire an agent up, you're out tapping into a global chain of electricity, cooling, mining, and emissions. The footprint is real. Looking beyond the technology, we move into the world of regulation. AI's legal landscape is moving fast. The EU AI Act already bans certain uses like social scoring, but that's only the beginning. The harder questions are about intellectual property and identity. When anyone's likeness can be cloned and distributed online, ownership becomes murky. Who controls your digital self? Then there's the epistemic dimension, misinformation. AI doesn't just blur the line between fact and fiction. It erodes trust in knowledge itself. We've seen this already. Deloitte Australia had to refund $440,000 after an AI-generated report to the government was riddled with fake quotes and sources. In the UK, an £89 million court case involving Qatar National Bank revealed that half of the AI-generated legal citations were completely fabricated. That's exactly why I built my own AI fact checker a tool to verify AI-generated research before I use it in my content and slides. If you want, the link's in the description to this video. Moving on to the social dimensions, this is the human side of AI that often gets overlooked. It includes everything from bias and education to accessibility. I've seen companies hire brilliant PhDs who build systems so complex that nobody else in the business can actually use them. The problem isn't the code, 
it's the belief that AI is a purely technical challenge. For ordinary people, the social dimension feels even more personal. Many are anxious about AI taking their jobs or making their skills obsolete. My cousin, for example, just graduated in illustration, right into the world dominated by AI image and video generators like Sora 2. She's now trying to figure out where she fits in in an industry that's shifting under her feet. Economic. This is where all of the dimensions converge. Building AI systems requires enormous capital and resources. As a co-founder working in agentic AI, I can tell you that raising money in a world where the perceived value of software has dropped is tough. The time and cost to build production grade software has fallen sharply. So investors now assume your product is just a chat GBT wrapper or something anyone could recreate with a few API calls. Whether that's fair or not, it affects access to capital. According to Stanford's AI index, 2025, global corporate investment in AI reached about $252 billion in 2024. And McKinsey estimates that by 2030, building and scaling data centers for AI will require around 5.2 trillion in capital expenditure. With numbers like that, the question becomes, where will the returns come from? Then there's the political and geopolitical aspect. AI has become a matter of state power. Access to chips, compute, and models is being restricted and weaponized. The US and China dominate the frontier labs, OpenAI, Anthropic, Google, DeepSeek. While Europe's leading contender, Mistral AI, still lacks their scale. Many regions from Africa to parts of Asia have no competitive labs at all. Imagine a future where access to AI infrastructure itself is turned off. That's a form of weaponization we rarely discuss. In an AI-first economy, being cut off from those systems would be devastating. And beyond these, there are still more dimensions. Security, ethical, behavioral, design. Each one adds another layer of complexity. When you step back and look at how all of these dimensions interact, the system becomes almost impossible to predict. But that's also where the opportunities lie. These emerging problems are new. They sit outside of any AI's training data, which means solving them will demand human ingenuity. So yes, AI might replace some of the jobs we know today, but the challenges it creates will open up countless others, and those will be solved, not necessarily by machines alone, but by people working with artificial intelligence.